So welcome back to Two Gals and a Half Glass Full. Um, Jess, how's it going? What you got in your cup today? Oh, yeah. Well, this morning I do have coffee and a travel mug because I don't drink it fast enough and it gets cold. So um, this way keeps it a little bit warmer. Uh, so Dr. Bobby, what's in your glass? So coffee as well. It's been a early morning, uh, getting up, getting my notes done before my PTA started work at 7 a.m. So it is a full cup of coffee today. Um, so with us, we got Steve and he is a personal trainer at Beyond Measure uh, Personal Training. And Steve, what you got in your cup? I also have some coffee here. I call this jet fuel. I've got uh, two shots of espresso, some hot water, and then also 10 grams of uh, collagen protein. So Ooh. a little bit of everything in there. Yep. Perfect. Collagen like protein. It. What is, uh, what do you find that is helpful for? Uh, I mean, well, there's some benefits for your skin, but then anytime you can get more protein into your diet, it's always uh, useful. So I, I try to get as much as I can. So that's kind of my rule with coffee. If I'm going to have coffee, I've got to add, uh, <laughs> add some protein to it. So awesome. I like it. I like it. I like it. I might have to try some of that, especially collagen. These wrinkles are not going to, you know, cure themselves. <laughs> Good stuff. Yeah. Um, so, so Steve, we are talking about, uh, it's Heart Health Awareness Month. And so we're talking about how important it is to move our bodies. Ideally, you know, we're shooting for that 150 minutes a week, but also talking about how that's actually pretty difficult to do on a consistent basis when we're also trying to make sure that we're staying um, in tune with the rest of the rules in our lives. So being parents, being dog owners, being professionals, being spouses, being friends, being partners, and all these other roles that we're trying to balance. And so with you being a personal trainer, um, I'm sure that you've seen and worked with a lot of people and try to implement strategies that sometimes have worked and maybe sometimes haven't worked. So that's kind of the goal of our conversation today is to, again, just learn from other people and see if we can um, not make the same mistakes because, you know, I'm kind of good at that sometimes and I try not to make the same <laughs> mistakes. Um, so what are some of the biggest misconceptions that you have noticed when it comes to people wanting to work out and, and be quote unquote healthy? Well, I mean, you hit the nail on the head with, you know, kind of you know, how overwhelming it can seem to people to, to have that thought of even just 150 minutes a week or what, whatever it might be. Um, and that kind of ties into misconceptions as well. So for us, we try to make it as, as simple as possible for people to start, you know, the 150 minutes a week could be a long-term goal for somebody, right? So uh, we always like to say, get started as, as simple as possible. Uh, something that where you think of it, you're like, oh, that's easy. You know, I could easily do that. No problem. No, it doesn't matter what it, even, even if it's a five minute walk one time a week, uh, just to get started is, is just so critical for people. Um, so I think that's the biggest misconception, uh, you know, right off the bat is, is most people, when they think of fitness, they think, oh, I've got to work out. If, I, if, if I'm going to get any results, I've got to train five days a week. I can't ever have a glass of wine again. You know, I've got to give up all this stuff. And it's just so not true. Um, so again, uh, just trying to start simple. Um, very, very basic, you know, for anyone that comes into our gym, for example, we'll, we'll kind of help Put it in perspective. Um, our guidelines for people uh, are what we want for them is to get a minimum of two days a week of strength training. And then five days a week, we want them to just be moving for 20 to 30 minutes. Could be walking, bike riding, whatever it might be. Um, so just keeping it as simple as possible. We, we put in perspective by letting them know like, hey, if you get two strength workouts a week for a full year, that's over a hundred strength workouts, uh, which is very, very significant. And, and that helps take some pressure off for people. So uh, yeah, I would say that's the biggest misconception is that you, you know, you have to work out every day and that you have to eat perfect uh, and that you can never, you know, have any pizza ever again. It's just not, not true at all. Yeah. I think that's, that's probably one of my biggest mottos when I'm trying to, I'm getting a little bit um, mad at myself because I'm not crushing it and whatever it might be. And I, I, I go back into my head. And I'm like, just a little bit of something is better than a whole lot of nothing. And so even if you just have like 10 minutes to get out for a walk and, um, get that heart rate up, that's 10 minutes more than what you would have done beating yourself up, sitting still. And so like sure. that motto of a little bit of something is better than a whole lot of nothing, um, helps me a ton. I don't know. What about you, Dr. Bobby? 
Um, I was going to say the same is, well, one I talked about last week is trying to schedule it in. That is like what helps me probably the most, because if I can get there, then I can do it. I think the hardest part of working out sometimes is actually just showing up um, or just starting. Um, so normally if I can like just get my first like foot out the door, whether it's for a walk with the dogs or actually get in the car to drive to where I'm going, um, then it's normally not as much of a hassle or I don't want to use the word hassle, but it's not as hard once I've actually started the movement and like started going. Um, and so I think for me, it's scheduling. Um, is what's awesome. really helpful. Cool. Um, so, Steve, what are some of the, we'll say, just benefits of switching up your workouts? Like, why is that helpful? Well, I think for for some, it just keeps it fun and engaging. Um, anytime you're, you know, doing something long enough, it can start to get boring. And if you're getting bored with something, uh, you're going to start to lose motivation to to continue. So. That's, I think, one of the biggest things is when you're when you're making small little changes and adjustments, um, it just keeps it fresh and exciting and and uh, and spicy for you, which is a word I like to use uh, a lot of the time. So I think that's a big one. Um, and then there's obviously the neurolog neurological component to it. Um, you know, that feeling of of getting sore. Um, not it is never really necessarily the goal, but every once in a while, uh, if we're being realistic about it, it's nice to feel the you know that little bit of soreness in certain areas, uh, just to have that little reminder that you're doing something. So anytime you do something new uh, or different or something that you haven't done in a while, you're going to get that little kind of soreness feeling as well, uh, which again is not the intent, but you know, again, I understand it is good to feel it uh, every once in a while. So uh, I would say those are the, you know, the, the top two, um, you know, for me is just keeping it fun, keeping it fresh, and then uh, getting that reminder that you, that you did some work uh, the day before or two days before. So I know you do personal training, but you also own a gym and have like classes. So how do you switch that up for your, your clients and for the people that maybe not be doing personal training, but also do the classes? How do you, um, what do you offer and what do you suggest for them to do? For sure. Yeah. So we, um, at our gym, we do what we call semi-private personal training. So that means that there are uh, six people or less per trainer. And so the trainers, they're working off of a set template of a workout, um, for example, but it's our trainer's responsibility to adjust uh, those movement patterns for each person individually based on their fitness level, any movement limitations they might have, um, things like that. So while they are working off of a similar uh, kind of a structure, we do kind of individualize it for each person. So, um, and then, you know, if, if you're on your own, um, you know, just finding the right movement patterns that work for you. Um, you know, you don't want to, what I like to say is if you're getting started, um, just getting started, I think trying to find something that challenges you to about a 70% difficulty or challenge level is kind of where you want to live uh, until you feel comfortable and confident with the movements that you're doing with it technique is, is most important. Um, and then over time, as you get more confident and comfortable, you can kind of increase that uh, difficulty upwards to, you know, 80 to 90% uh, effort. And, and so, um, you know, when you start getting to that uh, level of effort or difficulty, uh, that's going to completely change uh, the movement for you as well and how it impacts your body. So um, I like to paint that picture for people just for safety in the beginning, and then also being realistic about, you know, how long this stuff takes um, you know, to actually see results. Um, I like to use analogies a lot. And one of my favorite analogies is uh, with sports, right? So golf is a great one. Uh, no, I don't think anyone on earth has stepped on a golf course and was just great at it right away. Um, and the same is true with, with strength training. Uh, the, the strength training, the, the, they're all skills and they take a lot of practice and you're just not going to step in there uh, and get results after a week, uh, just like we wouldn't expect that in, in golf or like a martial <laughs> art or like Bobby gymnastics. Um, we wouldn't be doing anything fancy with me on, on day one or week one or even month one. Um, so I, I think those analogies definitely help uh, put it in perspective for people too. Yeah, I think that's really helpful to be realistic about expectations because we think of, um, you know, strength training or running or walking or biking as something that's super easy, right? Like you just go out and go for a run. Um, with me being somebody that enjoys running, it's like, actually, there's a lot that goes into the gait cycle of running. And there's a lot that goes into keeping your mobility to have injury prevention and the specificity of the strength that you need. 
to run without injury. And it's not this like, oh, just go out and do it. And then if you're not good at it, it's like, oh, well, something must be wrong with me. Um, it's the same thing. Like it's just trying to make sure that you give yourself that grace and that learning curve and then reaching out to people that can be helpful and be supportive to you. So whether it's working with a personal trainer or a coach or um, a group of people that might know more about the topic than you do, is a great way to get started and have success with it. Um, because yeah, like I, when I first ran, I had all sorts of running related injuries. I had no idea what I was doing. And like my running partner was like my friend in college and I would just go out and start in a sprint. And she was like, Jess, what are you doing? Why are you sprinting right now? We're going for a couple miles. I'm like, oh, I thought this was running. She's like, no, no, slow it, slow your pace. Like you're going to like crash in like the next block here. Um, so it's like, yep. I, I had no idea. I didn't know what it meant to, to do something for an endurance. I was more of like a, you know, tennis player, volleyball player. I just, I did all sprinting. Um, so it's just, I think the more that we can tell people in advance, Hey, it's not as easy as it seems. Just start slow, learn from people around you and you'll be fine and you'll have fun with it. Otherwise it's just kind of frustrating. Um, so Bobby, how, sure. how do you feel about like when you were, I, I know Bobby ran a marathon. And so, um, there was, oh, no, but... <laughs> I was there, I was there. I was supportive <laughs> on the sideline. Um, but that was, oh, that, that, was, was horrible. Tough. that was really tough. It, it was, was a huge goal. And, um, there was a lot of, um, I think misconceptions of, of what it, like what it takes. I'll never forget yeah. that marathon I did um a I didn't quite train like you should lesson number one um you don't go out and run 12 miles before and feel like you're ready to go for a marathon um but I'll never forget I'm like so uh, Steve I about mile 17 um I developed almost a drop foot in my left leg so I'm like dragging my left leg for the last like eight miles and I got there at the end and I hear a kid go, mom, why are these people walking? <laughs> I just wanted to be like, you get out here on mile 26, dragging your leg. And tell me how you feel. <laughs> oh my gosh. It was a, there was a lot of uh, lessons learned in that. And training is very important is one of the lessons. And the importance of yeah. strength with the endurance. I was right? just saying, I feel like there's a so, lot of misconceptions about strength, especially yeah. on the female side of like, I don't want to do strength training because I don't want to bulk up or I don't want to, you know, I want to, they want to do more cardio just to be lean. And I feel like there's so much benefits to the strength side of things. Yeah. And yeah. I think that's what and you guys kind of made me think of a, another yeah. misconception, um, you know, throughout that you guys kind of highlighted the importance of having a coach you know, saving you time, energy, and, and potentially injuries, training for certain things. Um, a, another misconception working with the trainer is I think that most people feel like they almost need to be in shape before they start working with a personal trainer. And um, it couldn't be further from the truth because that's the job of a trainer is to meet you where you're at and to safely progress you at a level that's smart for you individually. So uh, you shouldn't have to do that by yourself. So th that's another misconception that that trainers can definitely, um, at least you know, educated, smart, experienced trainers can help you, uh, you know, save save yourself from those things. I was about to say, I know, and um, unlike PT, um, where we have a lot of regulation on becoming a therapist, becoming a trainer, I know I had asked you, um, there isn't much regulation on it. Um, and kind of anyone can call themselves a personal trainer. So uh, what advice would you have for someone that's looking for a knowledgeable personal trainer? Um, I will, I told, I've told Jess every time I go into work with you, I work out with you. I learn something new almost every time. And so I appreciate your knowledge. So how can we help others that may not be in this area, in the Chicago area, find a good trainer in their location? For sure. Um... That's, that's such a good question. And I think there's so many things to be aware of. One thing to be aware of right off the bat is just because somebody looks the part doesn't necessarily mean they, they know what they're doing. Uh, they just may be genetically gifted. They may love working out themselves, but that doesn't mean that they're um, a skilled or knowledgeable trainer. Okay. So that's, that's one thing I think that's a tough thing in this industry to get past because, you know, a lot of uh, goals are, um, kind of on the surface. And, um, and so when you see people who are in really good shape, you just kind of assume that they know exactly what they're doing. So that's, that's something that's kind of a big red flag just to be aware of. Um, 
especially when you see the trainers, if you look at their social media and it's a bunch of pictures of them without their shirt on, uh, if, they're, if they're dressed unprofessionally uh, when they're working with you, those are some really, really big red flags that, uh, to be perfectly honest, um, they're making it more about themselves than the people that they're working with. Uh, so if you see any of that, I would avoid that situation uh, at all costs if you're somebody that's looking for quality training. Um, and then uh, the, from there, it's, it's simply asking, asking them about their certifications. What's amazing is that in my 10 years of doing this, I could count on one hand how many people have asked me what my certifications are, uh, which, is, which is pretty wild and a little frustrating because I have like all of them. Um, but, but it's, it's, it's all good. Um, but honestly, uh, you know, I appreciate it when people ask because it's very important, you know, personal training is not rocket science, but there is science to it. And, you know, there's a right and a wrong way to, to treat people. And, you know, your health is, uh, is it in these people's hands, you know, and early on, I mean, I couldn't, I mean, and I'm saying this because I've made all the mistakes myself. I mean, from, you know, being a young trainer, I've been a part of gyms where uh, the goal of the gym was to make people throw up. Like that was, that was like, they saw that as a good thing. And, you know, I, obviously I learned a lot of what not to do, you know, at, at these places. And uh, so, yeah, ask about certifications. The way that they present themselves is really, really important. Do the social media, check them out on social media, um, see how they conduct themselves there. Um, and then also I would, you know, pay attention to the questions that they ask you. Uh, you know, are they listening to you when you when you meet with them or when you talk to them uh, the first time on the phone? Um, you know, what kind of questions are they asking you? Do they really care? Uh, do they really care about helping you? And those are uh, those are things you can pick up pick up on uh, when you meet with them, either in person or over the phone for the first time. Is are they taking the time to get to know you, your story, uh, kind of where you're at, and you know why you're there? Um, so those are those are really really important things you know, a sign of them being educated, certified, you know, uh, I went to college for, you know, I have a, a bachelor's degree in exercise science, you know, so it's like, got all this stuff. Um, but at the end of the day, too, on the other end of that, guys, like, I've met some people who do not have a degree in exercise science, but are some of the best people in the world who are just truly passionate about this industry, and have dedicated themselves to learning and growing as a professional in the industry. And they're better than some of the people that I know in the industry that are, that do have the best certifications. So while certifications can be important, it's not the end all be all, um, you know, by all means. So kind of a confusing answer because there's so many <laughs> different avenues and so many different facets to it, but uh, you know, some definitely some key things to, to watch out for when you're looking for a trainer. I feel like a good, um, a good personal trainer is actually, so PT and personal training can a lot of ways go hand in hand. And I feel like the more, the better we have personal trainers out there, they can actually help prevent injury and prevent, um, kind of go in the way that where PT wants to go into more of a preventative medicine versus always reactive and always um, just dealing with injuries and looking at more, how can we, so I feel like personal training is a great fit in there. And I agree with what Steve was saying with, interviewing the personal trainer and then it's not necessarily all about their knowledge so I would almost give it a 50 50 and like I really do think it's just as important that they are understanding who you are as an individual and valuing that I've had so many patients that have worked with personal trainers and the whole the whole thing that they focus on is more 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 strength, heavier every single week. It's like, let's just load you down more. You're making all of this progress. Well, they're not considering the, the person's goals or what their comorbidities are, meaning like other things they have going on. They might have osteoarthritis, stenosis in their spine. They might be newly postpartum. There's all sorts of different issues that could be going on that that personal trainer needs to be sensitive to. And so, and that's where like, you know, it's finding that balance of hearing you as an individual instead of um, just, oh, it's always about more. It's about bigger muscles. Well, not everybody wants bigger muscles. Some people, <laughs> like really, like I, I, I kind of don't care all that much about big muscles. I don't want to be injured when I run though. So that's my goal. So I don't like, it's exactly. like, okay, cool. Like my biceps look big, great. Um, <laughs> but that doesn't, doesn't help me. Now I want to maintain good strength, 
So I want to be strong when I'm working with my patients, or I want to be strong when I'm picking up my kids, but I don't typically care about that, like definition. And so if somebody were to be working with me and it's all about like, Oh, look at, you know, let's isolate that. Rah, 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 and I'm gonna be like, I got to go. Like people aren't <laughs> hearing me. Um, and then be easy for me to then have a bad experience and then not go back to somebody else. So it's really important to, if we can prevent the bad experience by having that interview on the front end and just getting a, a feel for that individual's ability to listen and then give the answers that are in response to what you just said. And so that plus intellect, right? <laughs> we still have to have. I was going to say, you got to have, yeah. Um, I think are just two really big key points that you were saying, Steve, that I appreciate you were mentioning that because um, as PTs, that's, we're all about function and what are your roles in life and what do you value? And then like, you know, we've got this, this patient that's like doing so much better. And we're like, okay, like now it's time for you to maintain it. And then uh, like they might have a bad experience and we're like, no, no, no. Um, so I think the more that we empower people to have these better experiences, leading a healthy lifestyle is, is huge. Um, and there's going to be bad experiences. There are, we're not going to win everything. Um, but if we can win more than we lose, that's a goal, right? <laughs> sure. Yeah. I mean, if a trainer doesn't take the time to interview you and get to know you and what you're looking for in your history, all these things that you're saying, our job as trainers, much like PTs is to create a positive experience with movement. And on top of that, going back to consistency, what we were talking about earlier, if, if you're coming in and you're, we're not doing anything that you're wanting to improve on, the odds of you wanting to stick with it are, are very low. Uh, like you said, big muscles aren't important to you. Um, so it would make no sense for you to come in and do a bunch of bicep curls and uh, try, to, try to bulk up. It makes no sense. You want to perform better at running. So we need to do things that are going to help you there. Um, but that can't happen if the trainer doesn't take the time to get to know you and learn about what your goals are and what you're looking for. So, uh, yeah, completely agree. Completely agree with you there. Awesome. Um, well, Bobby, do you have any other questions for Steve? No, I think, do you have anything else you'd like to add, Steve? I don't think so. You know, I just, for anyone who's listening to this, who, you know, is scared or intimidated, uh, about going to the gym. Uh, number one, I completely understand because what's funny is I, I do own a gym, but, um, you know, it's kind of the office to, to me. So I actually have to work out somewhere else outside of the gym. So I actually have another gym membership. Um, and you know, it's, it's one of the bigger box gyms and, you know, I go in there and first of all, like everyone's like super fit. Um, you know, there's all this equipment everywhere and I'm intimidated. Like, I'm, I'm like, I, this is my job. This is my profession. And I walk in there and I'm kind of intimidated. So I totally get it. Um, you know, what's important to know is that people are, are not there to judge you. Um, you know, start really simple. Uh, if you're not sure what to do, reach out to somebody uh, to help you because that's how you get more confident with what you're doing is when you take the time to get some instruction um, so that you're not looking over your shoulder worried about if, you know, you're looking stupid because, but let's be honest, that's, that's, I think one of our, all of our, our biggest fears is not wanting to, to look dumb or stupid in public, right? So um, if, if that means you need some, some time with a trainer just to get some confidence, go ahead and do that. But uh, it's my hope that anyone listening to this can, can get some confidence to just do something, uh, just be consistent. It doesn't matter how long or how, you know, how short your work moving for the key is just building that habit and, and uh, making it a part of your life. So uh, hopefully, hopefully anything that we've uh, said today has uh, helped encourage you to, you know, take that first step. Like Bobby said earlier, the hardest part is getting in the car. Um, and then when you get there, uh, you know, you, everything else is taken care of. So uh, yeah, that's that's the last thing I think I'd like to, to add. And so then for anyone in the Naperville, Aurora, Chicagoland area, we will put Steve's gym and information down below um, so you guys can reach out to there if you have any questions and or looking for a great place to work out. Awesome. awesome. Yeah. And thank you for, thank you for all that help with the misconceptions. I think it's one of the biggest things that we're trying to get the word out about is that it's not this like straight line, perfect, you know, we all are just like you are where it's like, if I walk into like a, you know, for example, like a CrossFit gym and everybody's big and, and muscly. I'm going to be like, uh, I, I, I don't know if I know what you're doing here. And I, and I might 
totally mess this up and look like an idiot. And um, I'm going to have the same exact response, um, but I'm not, it's not something that I couldn't learn. And so if I, if I wanted to, I just would have to say like, they're not here to, you know, they're not here to judge me. Everybody's here to just like do their own thing. And so i um, trying to remember that is that even if they look like they know that they're confident or that they know what they're doing, um, they're probably thinking just the same exact thing of, of like wanting, not wanting somebody else to judge them. So it's like, you know, if we all just realize that we're just trying to hear, make it in the world together. And then someone else probably doesn't actually care what we look like. Um, they're probably just doing their own thing, thinking that somebody else is judging them. <laughs> so. Um, well, I know for me, like when I'm looking around at a gym, I'm not looking to judge. I'm looking to learn. Like, right, what are you exactly. doing? You're good ideas. And yeah. so a lot of times I think you feel like people are watching you and it's more, they might be trying to learn from you. They might be trying exactly, to see yeah. what else is out there. Exactly. Um, it's just sometimes reframing that thinking is super helpful. I have to do it on a regular basis uh, just to reframe that. Like maybe they're not looking at me because of X, Y, or Z, which I'm thinking. Um, and then, you know, sure enough, like, you know, they weren't and, and um, they're like, oh yeah, like I just, I saw, I don't know, that headband you were wearing. I was just wondering where you bought it. I'm like, oh, okay. You know, I, I thought I had something in my teeth and that's what you're looking at. I don't know. Just like you make this like horrible, like first thought of like, oh, they must be judging me. And really they weren't. And so it's, yep. it's funny. We all do it. We all do it. And it's just, it's not our brains are wired, right? Yep. It is. It is. It is. Um, well, so. Well, thank you. And uh, uh, oh, so we like to end each session with a challenge. Um, and so we would like for everyone to try um, just kind of next month, um, we're going into like nutrition and better understanding how like food affects us and things like that. So our challenge, Jess. Okay, so our, our challenge, we're going to rotate our challenges each week. It's not just exercise that we're going to challenge you on. We're going to challenge you on all sorts of different things. So sleep is another value um, that's going to be helpful, which is going to be beneficial to keep us moving. And so our challenge is to try and start recording how many hours you're actually sleeping per night. And so there's different apps that can track that. You can just kind of track it down on a journal. Um, but knowing that maybe we might need to be getting a little bit more sleep in order to crush it in other areas, I think is like a good place to kind of start. So, um, I'm have uh, notoriously not been that good at this. Um, so <laughs> I, I have made this a huge value and I'm telling you, I just feel so much better every day. If I can at least get seven hours of, of sleep that I feel better. Age is even better. I'm just like, let's do it. But like, if I'm in the six hour range for multiple nights, um, everything in life is harder. It's just harder. Um, and I'm much less likely to get out for a run. I'm much less likely to do my strength training, whatever it might be. So, um, so let's just challenge everybody. Let's see if we can try and at least start the process of even tracking it and see where you are. Maybe you're doing great. Um, maybe, maybe you're not. And then that can start to highlight maybe areas that are going to make other aspects of, of life a little bit easier. So, all right, so we look forward to next month. We're gonna switch gears a little bit, start talking about nutrition a little bit more. We're not nutritionists, we're just having conversations, okay? Um, so thank you again, Steve, and we will see y'all next week. Bye.